should be able to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Whoops. I'll check to make sure. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 28 April 2014 Town of Hampton Selectman's Meeting. Number one, public comment. Those wishing to speak in public, please take the podium. Okay. I see some discussion. Is, yes, sir. <laughs> John Kane, Hampton Beach, um, Village District Marketing Manager and a resident at 115 Ocean Boulevard. I'm here to, uh, to speak in favor of a race that you're going to be looking at tonight and maybe approving or going over. Um, the beach is very quiet now. The race is going to be held May 10th. It's still very preseason. Uh, for many of you who uh, know how preseason it is. It's the weekend before the tow rodeo. I know, mm -hmm. Rick, you know about the tow rodeo that goes past your house, and Mr. Bridal goes past your house, and it's always one of those cold weekends, it seems. Just you used like to go by my house. Yeah, I used to go by your house. So, um, this is where I was trying to stretch out this shoulder uh, seasons um, in the fall and in the spring. And in the fall, we've done a pretty good job. We're, we're right up to Columbus Day weekend with a lot of nice events, so that's helped out. In the spring, it's usually very hard to really predict, you know, the weather. Um, might be beautiful in the town of Hampton at 70, and uh, if, any, if you lived on the beach for a while, you know that all you need is a little onshore breeze, and that can be down to 50 d degrees pretty quick and have people go home. Or you might have just a little mist, like today, coming off the ocean, and it just makes it miserable. The race that they're going to be having, and it's a 5 case race slash walk. These are kind of fun events that a lot of racers like to partake in. They're not very strenuous. They're not very long. Um, some of the fast people that do race these races, you know, can do it in seven minutes or so. So they're going to be done this race, which is only 3.1 miles within about, um, you know, under 21 minutes. Someone walking like myself can probably complete the whole course in uh, under 50 minutes or so with the, just a normal pace. That's what it is. So this race is not going to be taking up a lot of time. However, it will take, you know, a lot of people to the beach, and that's what we're always striving to do, especially people from out of town. Um, I walk down by the seashell all, all the time. I was just there just the other night, um, the day, excuse me, before the uh, meeting on Saturday. And there's people down there with their cameras and they're, they're just going around the seashell. And you can hear them speaking into their, their uh, phones. <coughs> this place is so clean. It's so beautiful. You should see it. And that's what we like to uh, see it happen is new people come to the beach, and especially with the running community being as tight as they are, they'll go to another race and go, oh, where were you? Oh, we were at Hampton Beach. You should see that place. It is beautiful. It's great. It was a nice <coughs> race. Um, so we're looking for that also to happen. You know, people going out that aren't always coming down here. And we're going outside our little comfort zone. And um, I, I was informed that uh, some of these racers, a lot of the racers, 40% or 50%, something like that, are coming from out of town, which hopefully will help with some of the rooms down there. So they come down. Uh, it's just like a show. There's no difference between a show at the casino that's going to hold 2,000 people. This will be a lot less. But um, the, the month of April was extremely tough on the beach. Uh, Freddie didn't have any shows at the casino, and that reflected in a lot of the restaurants down there. The boardwalk, you know, they've done hundreds of thousand dollars of new renovations this year <coughs> and you go in there there's very few people because he's not getting any of that crowd the same thing with the sea catch they opened up early hoping to have people come down and and the weather and the lack of shows going on has hurt that also and that's <coughs> going to also reflect also in the hotel room so when we get these events especially in the off season um, they don't all stay over 
but they do bring you know either a child with them <coughs> or a spouse with them they might go and take the kids <coughs> into the boardwalk or they might go down the street and get some pizza or they might go up to Ron's or whatever after the race and, and have a dinner or something but all these little things help especially in the off season where you know we're just trying to get up to speed and running you're spending a lot of money out front to clean it up get all your f food and provisions and, and clothing all in and you know it's hard to walk <coughs> into these restaurants now and see people just standing around the owners are losing their shirts down there the bartenders aren't <coughs> making a lot of money because they only see a few people come in so anything that we can do to um, you know push something forward and have something preseason like this uh, with the kind of people that are coming in. They're not rowdy. They're runners. Um, you know, Boston loves them. We love them. We, we've never had a problem with runners down here before. They're great people. Um, and the race is, you know, it, it's very short. Um, you know, 5K. Um, Mr. Bean can probably run that in, in, in that 28 minutes or something, or 25 minutes. Again, it's a, a short race. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see him running the soft sand. So he's faster than that. I, he doesn't do the soft sand. That's something I can't <laughs> do. But the uh, the thing I'm saying is, it's running from F Street. It's not even going all the way up to one kind of road and back. It will be over quickly. It's it's not really going to be that bothersome that early in the season. So I'm hoping that you look positive on it. And I think it is a great thing for him to beach. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. For the public comment, sir. Bob Ladd, 7 Cutler Avenue, Village District Commissioner. In January, we took a vote before the precinct and voted unanimously to support this race for all the reasons that John's explained. It's my understanding almost half of the people in the race will be coming from out of state, which is a wonderful opportunity to stimulate a little business on the beach. Now, having said that, I would also like to take a minute to propose that this board consider creating an emergency management committee. And <coughs> a little bit of background check into this. Stratum has an emergency management director. Seabrook has a director. Northampton has a director. Exeter places the duty with the fire chief. Hampton Falls places the duty with the fire chief and we place the duty with the police chief. We have kind of reached a point where there are so many <coughs> potential difficulties that could occur that we have to kind of bring this together in a more formalized way in my opinion. Just over the weekend, the ferry accident in Korea highlighted something that's very important. A lack of preparedness leads to very negative outcomes. The two senators from Massachusetts have written the Atomic Energy Commission questioning whether the Pilgrim and the Seabrook power plants are sufficiently designed to withstand earthquakes. The South is now faced with all kinds of tornadoes and what do they say? If you want to prepare for these things, you have a better outcome than you would otherwise. The district, in its own small way, is attempting to prepare a little bit by having at the May 14th monthly meeting the chief of police, the fire chief, and the DPW direct to speak to a question of the evacuation plan. It, finally, if you look into FEMA, FEMA is basically designed in, to accomplish two goals. The goal we most identify with is the post-event goal where they come in with economic resources to help rebuild a devastated community. But an equally large and perhaps much more important component of FEMA is hazard mitigation, addressing the potential for an event before it happens. Within that context, they have something they call the community rating system. And if a community cho chooses to join in to this process, it can achieve very substantial reductions in flood insurance premiums over time by meeting certain FEMA criteria. In fact, these uh, discounts can run from 5% to 45%, so it's not meaningless by any means. 
Also, if you have a committee, you could look into the possibility of FEMA grants through the state and Homeland Security to do certain things. And, and if you sew this all together, you could eventually reach the point where you could be giving some really good advice to the planning board about zoning because a lot of what FEMA is promoting is zoning consistent with the potential f for hazard mitigation. And it just seems that it, it, this really can't be done, in my opinion, by a police chief who already has many, many other responsibilities. And I also just mentioned in passing, emergency management is an ice tone of glove. It fits many situations. In fact, it would be broad enough to fit, the, uh, if a committee recommended, you could consider giving the drug Narcon to all the police officers, as it has been proven to be very effective as a, an antidote for heroin overdoses. And everything you read in the paper says we have a heroin emergency in the community. I'm not saying do it or not do it. I'm just saying this it, this is something you can do on a very wide-ranging scale to the benefit of everyone. And I'd ask you to at least consider it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Seeing none, announcements in community calendar, sir. Uh, Hampton Public Works, this is annual springtime curbside, curbside yard waste uh, week, April 28th where they'll be picking up uh, curbside, lead out your leaves, grass clippings, and pine needles, etc. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've received a very nice thank you a letter from Richie McFarland Children's Center for the $6,000 for the social service funding request. Uh, we also received a very nice letter from the Fisher House. Uh, and the last sentence says, on behalf of the Fisher family and the many military and veterans families who benefit from your generosity during their most difficult times, we thank you for your contribution of $25,000, which I think is, is very nicely done. And uh, Mr. Tinker has provided us, and we'll probably mention it later on in the meeting, with a credit and exemption breakdown that's, that's great for 2014 versus 2013. Thank you, ma'am, sir. Nothing. Thank you. Yeah, the rec department has uh, still some openings uh, for summer lifeguards, for the parking lot attendants, and for camp counselors. Good. Uh, <coughs> tuck camp for the kids this year is, uh, it is now full. There is, a, uh, there is room on the waiting list, but they've already filled the camp up for the summer. And uh, there's also still spots in town for the adopt a spot, the local gardening, if, if you... Uh, if you have a business or something, I'd like to adopt at one of the, the many little pocket parks we have in town. Uh, would be uh, talk to the rec department. They'd uh, be love to talk to you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Welch, any announcements? No, sir. Thank <coughs> you, sir. <coughs> Roman three appointments. Uh, number one, Ellen Lavin, town treasurer, has been rescheduled and will not be heard tonight. Uh, number two, Mike Swelzer, the finance director, has been rescheduled and will not be heard tonight. Uh, number three, Richard Fitzpatrick, 4 Norris Lane Seawall. Sir, please take the seat. Good evening. My name is Steve Oles from MSC Civil Engineers and Land Spares. With me tonight is Richard Fitzpatrick of 4 Norris Lane. Uh, as you are aware, we made a submittal to the board to do an emergency um, repair of the seawall. On the plan you will see um, some pictures in the lower left hand corner that I provided um, that show the seawall um, and basically in the center of the plan. In the center right here is the seawall in question. Above that is the seawall area uh, where the rocks have fallen portion of the seawall and then this is walking down the sidewalk looking at a portion of the wall that we'd like to take down. Basically there's a wind alcove of uh, rocks that have been stacked up that was done before Mr. and Mrs. Fitzpatrick bought the property and these rocks are just laid on top of each other and what's happened is the wave action from the storm events have knocked the rocks down. It's a safety hazard if we'd like to pick those rocks up and put the rocks on the seawall and get rid of that wind alcove and remove the rocks that have fallen down on the beach uh, just as a safety precaution. 
for Mr. Fitzpatrick and his grandkids and kids. Uh, we have the approval from DES for emergency authorization, and we're here tonight to seek approval to go forth with the work before the May 15th deadline. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson, please. I like the crane. That's pretty, <laughs> <laughs> pretty neat idea. I'm looking at the pictures down here, and the picture on the bottom right. Yes. Is that the way the wall was originally configured? Uh, the way the wall it was originally configured. Looks like a walkway. I'm sorry. It looks like a walkway. There, there are stairs that currently go down, um, right here. There are stairs that swoop down around the side. Oh, okay, I can't see that from okay yep. from this picture. There, there are stairs that basically come down, and it's basically like a wind blockage of stones okay. that were just placed on top of each other, and the waves have knocked some of them down. We'd like to remove those and take the other stones out of the way. Now, this may be a really dumb question, but I am not an engineer. <coughs> Was an opening like like the one on the bottom right? Yes. Does that not give the waves more power to shoot up? And then dislodge more of the rocks? and, and the, um, Basically, the rocks that have fallen are from the, ba the way they're stacked. It's the wall itself hasn't fallen down. Oh. It's basically the stacking of the walls that have happened because somebody was trying to make a wind alcove oh. uh, for texture. I mean, basically, it's the wall, the retaining wall itself has not collapsed in any way. Okay, so there's no wall. defect in the base of right. the wall. There's no defect in the base of the wall. This is the rocks that have fallen down okay. due to the stacking of rocks without being mortared or bolted or chained okay. together. Okay. They've basically fallen down and created the hazard. The guy that we bought the house from for some reason did that and uh -huh. it didn't make any sense to us. And then right after we closed we got a notification that said we were in violation. And so I called him, and it turned out he had a federal permit, but not. So the guy was on the beach, and he said, hey, could you drop a few rocks here? <laughs> Which is really what he did. And then our first storm, it all. Yeah. So I all we want to do God is take the rocks the and put them back where they were. So we can just use the, the walkway to where I think it was always meant to. Do these gentlemen need to go before the planning board, correct? And conservation. Yeah. We're, we're going to do that after the fact, once it's fixed. Uh, right now, we have the emergency authorization um, from DES to fix this now because of a safety issue, and then we're going to do an after the fact wetlands permit with DES and submit the plans per the requirement of DES and come before the town um, and get the planning board approval at that point in time. Thank you. How we're going to work this selectman will see is selectman input, then we'll go to the town manager. Yeah. Further questions, ma'am? No, thank you. Selectman Griffin. Nothing for right now. Nothing for right now. Not right now, no. Mr. Welch, please lead us forward. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> this property, Mr. Fitzpatrick bought this property uh, some time ago. I'm told. Uh, his, uh, his predecessor in title uh, went to the state and got an emergency permit to, to do modifications to the seawall. As part of that permit, he was required to come to the town, to the planning board, and the conservation commission on the board of selectmen, which he never did. He just simply went and did whatever work <laughs> he wanted, and as a result, it wasn't done right, and yeah. so we're here today to try to solve that problem. Um, you will, even in hindsight, have to go to conservation and, and planning. I think that's, that's pretty obvious. In the meantime, what needs to happen here is we need to make the wall secure, because these rocks are not secure. Mm -hmm. And uh, given a good northeast blow, you may find them in your living room, depending on <laughs> depending upon the <laughs> angle of approach of the waves. And we certainly don't want that to happen, or or in your abutters' properties either. Now they're because they're quite close as well. Uh, he has filed all the paperwork required by the selectmen. He has filed the uh, the lease documents. He has paid for those. Uh, he has uh, filed. Um, all of the paperwork that goes along with the lease documents. So, uh, assuming you would allow him to, uh, in hindsight, correct what somebody else did mm. and he's trying to fix, I think then we're probably on the right path here so that we won't have a problem later on in the year with ro rocks being thrown around the beach and, and other things that we don't want to have happen. So, wonderful. I, I see conservation um, bobbing. May we uh, please uh, hear from conservation? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Jay Diener from the Conservation Commission. Uh, the town manager is absolutely correct that um, this work was 
uh, permitted by DES under an emergency authorization. Um, originally, we did not know of it because the copy of the emergency <coughs> authorization that should have come to the town of Hampton was for some reason sent to Northampton. Oh. So we didn't become aware of the fact that any work was being done here until after it was already done. Um, I applaud the fact um, that the, the applicants want to remove that wall. Um, clearly, it's not doing the job that it was originally designed to do. Also, it extends a lot further out onto the beach than any of the other surrounding seawalls. So I think there are a number of reasons why that's good work. The concern that I have is that if you noticed on the emergency authorization that was issued, the extension that was issued by DES, Point number nine says this permit shall expire on May 1st, 2014 and will not be extended. Um, I so I don't know to what extent that becomes an issue that has to be dealt with before the work can be done. It sounds like DES is saying you can do this work as long as it's done by May 1st. Okay, wonderful. And let me go to Mr. Welch and then you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Welch, could you? Mr. Chairman, DES's schedule is DES's schedule. Um, I guess I don't have a lot of sympathy for them. They're the ones who caused this entire problem to begin with. Um, and I might add it was caused politically, not uh, not just by DES, but by others as well who intervened. Um, this needs to be fixed. If it's not fixed and we have a storm, not only is this gentleman's property in danger, but the abutting properties may be in danger. And if that's the case, someone for the following day walking on the beach after the storm may be in danger too because it'll loosen all those rocks and they can come down on their own. <coughs> something we need to do immediately is to secure them. Uh, and I don't have a problem as long as conservation is willing to go along with, and I think planning is too, willing to go along with a hindsight permit to correct the danger that's involved here. Sir, your final comments? Yes, I have talked to DES this morning. Uh, Evan Lewis is out of the office until Wednesday. He's the one that signed the, con signed the emergency authorization. I talked to Frank Richardson, and Frank said that he doesn't see an issue, but it's up to Evan with giving us an extension because of the process of going through the approvals right now. Thank you very much. Mr. Welch, could you please frame uh, in, in word a motion that a board member could uh, uh, submit? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest to you that uh, Karen and Richard Fitzpatrick of 4 Norris Lane be granted a permit to repair a seawall at that location in accordance with uh, DES approvals and in accordance with the plans submitted to the Board of Selectmen. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good night. Roman three number four. Commander Berkeley Bennett, American Legion Post thirty five, regarding Memorial Day observance, parade and public gathering license. Commander, please. Please have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. It's those long green tables when you're the only one without a glass of water. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Berkeley Bennett of 12 Wayside Farm Lane, and it's an honor for me to come before the board for the first time this evening. I uh, appear before you tonight representing Post 35 as the commander-elect of uh, Post 35 here in Hampton. We have before the board an application for our annual Memorial Day parade and public gathering license, and I ask the selectmen to look favorably upon our request. On Monday, May 26, our Memorial Day observances begin on Hampton Beach at 8 a.m. at the Marine Memorial in front of the Ashworth Hotel. We then proceed to Weir Common in Hampton Falls at 9 o'clock, then on to the Northampton Parade at 10 a.m., which is followed by a service in front of the Northampton Town Offices on Atlantic Avenue. The Hampton Parade begins at 11 a.m. in the parking lot just east of the Town Offices, proceeds westbound on Winnicunit, north on Route 1, east on High Street, culminating with a ceremony in the High Street Cemetery. Other events uh, Post 35 is sponsoring this year, our 7th annual Hit the Beach Wounded Warrior program on Friday, August 29th at North Beach, and that's a program where we bring wounded warriors uh, into town and local members of the surfing community, including Ralph Vitello, help uh, teach them how to surf. We also have the 9-11 Global War on Terrorism Monument Rededication Ceremony on Thursday, September 11th at the Post on High Street. And finally, we have the Veterans Day Ceremonies on Tuesday, November 11th, same locations, same times as Memorial Day, but without the parades. And since most of these event 
it's involved Cost to Legion. We're also holding several fundraisers this year. Coming up first uh, this weekend is the Post 35 and Custom Kings Car Show and Swap Meet on Saturday, May 3rd at the Hampton Airfield. <coughs> we also have the Post 35 Yard Sale on Saturday, May 17th at 55 High Street which is in the parking lot of the medical <coughs> building just on the other side of Flatbread from the Post. And finally, we have our first annual uh, Post 35 Golf Tournament on Friday, June 6th at the Breakfast Hill Golf Club in Greenland. Auto Fair Nissan in Stratum is sponsoring a hole-in-one contest in which the prize is a 2014 Nissan Rogue. For more information about the Post or any of these events, I ask that you please see our website, post35.com. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me move. Very excited. Very excited. I'm happy to move that we grant permit. Is that appropriate? Wonderful. That is uh, on the uh, consent agenda, I believe. Uh, I have no problem picking it out of order. The chair. Wonderful. So, uh, uh, then a second on that, please. Second. Okay. And uh, any questions from the board? No. Yeah, I wanted to um, <coughs> congratulate you, and it's going to be tough shoes to fill for Ralph Patello. But I wish you a lot of luck. Um, Thank you, sir. I'll need it. Yeah, well, <laughs> Ralph did such a great job. And um, I don't think I'm going to be able to be here that day. So I'm sorry that I'm going to miss your uh, beginning of big events that you're going to be having. So, But I'll be there for others, I'm sure. Thank, Thank you, you. Just so the Legion does a great job every year. And we're, uh, I know uh, the citizens of Hampton are proud of all, of all that you guys do especially with the the Global War on Terrorism monument that you do every year. Uh, you guys represent our town well. And we appreciate that. Thank you, sir. I'll reiterate that. You do a super job. Really good. Congratulations. Thank you. I think it's, uh, it's an honor to, uh, to take the post after Ralph. Nobody can obviously replace Ralph Atello. He's stepping down, but he's not stepping out of the limelight. He'll still be very heavily involved in all of our activities and stuff. And Wonderful. You'll, you'll still be hearing from him in the future. Commander, thank you. There's a motion. Uh, there's a second. All those in favor for the parade, and that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, appreciate the time. You're doing well. Press on. Thank you. <laughs> Drill down, as our chairman says. Drill down. Roman th 3, number 5, Greg Grady, 14th Annual Hampton <coughs> Beach Master Sand Sculpting Competition. <coughs> and sir, please feel free to sit at the table. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah, you changed you. I already did that. <coughs> Evening, Selectman, uh, Manager Welch, Greg Grady, uh, 120 Kings Highway. I'm here uh, in support of the 14th Annual Masters Sand Sculpting Competition, um, without which um, uh, the town support, uh, I don't think we could have such a great event here. Uh, it's become known as uh, the kickoff event for Hampton, uh, as well as I think the state of New Hampshire for the summer, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, another great year. Um, if you look at the itinerary uh, that I passed out to you, uh, the support that we're looking for would be on the bottom three items from the police department. Um, just wanted to notify them and have them on, on their log what is, what is happening. Last year uh, I made a little bit of a foo par and I did not notify them. And we went, when we went in to uh, close down the uh, uh, drop-off area in front of the uh, seashell stage there was a little bit of confusion so anyway the the dates are clearly outlined there uh, the 11th will be setting up lights the 13th of June will be dropping the sand with the removal on the 7th of July um, and we just want to notify the police of that um, also, during the actual competition in past years, they had uh, increased their uh, public um, awareness, uh, just their public uh, presence uh, on the 19th and the 20th, just to uh, if we would have any damages th those nights, it would be uh, um, quite difficult to uh, uh, recreate this, the sculptures at that point. 
uh, and we haven't had any any problems in the past, so I don't foresee any. But it's always good to have. Uh, in, in, in years past, we had put the eye in the sky. I don't know if they still have that. The uh, yeah. you know, if we can do something or anything is is, is uh, helpful. Uh, Public Works Department uh, uh, has uh, in the past dropped off 500 feet of the wooden snow fencing with the posts. Uh, if we can get that done prior to the setup of the lights on the 11th, just drop it over on the fence and our people will uh, install it. Uh, and then with removal of it uh, after July 8th, um, it would be great. And uh, fire department has always helped to uh, fill our water barrels down there. Uh, the date we're looking at it would be June 17th. Uh, we're a little flexible on that. We could do it on the 16th or the 18th. Uh, the 17th is just would be a great time. Um, it, it looks like it's it's sort of minor that would uh, with the help that I'm asking for, but it's the support of uh, all the entities that are involved uh, and uh, that really make this such a great event. And uh, we look forward to it. Thank Any you, questions? sir. Selectman Wolsey. You've got the ocean right there, Greg. You can just scoop barrels in. And We've done that in the past. I don't have much of a back left, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great job. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Greg, you. are you doing it just north of the shell, like you, uh, just south of the shell, as you did last year? Just north of the shell, actually. So you're just going back to the other side? Right, in front of D Street. Okay. Of McDonald's there. I'm okay, there. good. Good. You guys do an excellent job, and it is a great event. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell? Great job, and, and great kickoff to the summer. I always love to be down there. We're looking forward to it. Super. Yeah. We'll bring the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Roman 3, number 6, Matt Gray. Parade and public gathering license, Craft Brew Races Seacoast. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Matthew Gray of 3 Curry Avenue in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, I'm the president of Gray Matter Marketing LLC. We're a small business based in Newport. Uh, we are an event marketing and management company consisting of three employees. We're, uh, our company was founded over two years ago, uh, just over two years ago. Our core competencies include road race management and craft beer festival management. Uh, we own and operate the Rhode Island and Cape Cod Brew Festivals. Um, we also uh, manage several road races, including the Ocean Road 10K and the Newport 10 Miler, which we actually hosted yesterday. Um, these events uh, are also always combined with a charitable component. Uh, yesterday we helped raise $8,000 for the Fort Adams Trust. In 2014, we've launched the new series, the Craft Beer Race. It's a 5K road race followed by a local craft beer festival. We have six events scheduled for this year, uh, including one in every New England state. Each event will feature 20 to 25 local breweries, and each event benefits a nonprofit organization, um, including uh, the upcoming Craft Brew Race Seacoast event, which we would like to host on May 10th, 2014, at Hampton Beach State Park. We've taken many steps in the process of securing permits and license with the town and the state to host this event, starting back in January 14th, as indicated earlier. Uh, we approached. Uh, the Tourism Council, uh, Mr. John Kane, invited us to come speak in front of his commission that very next day. Uh, we came right up and received unanimous approval of the event concept. Um, at that time, we were told uh, that we would need to secure the state uh, beach permit, uh, so we started the process with DREAD and have secured a permit to use the beach for this special event. During this time, we also spoke to dozens of breweries around the state, uh, including Smutty Nose, Blue Lobster, and Throwback Brewing. Uh, in addition, 22 other breweries from New Hampshire will be participating. Uh, we're not charging these breweries to participate. In fact, we're buying all the beer from each of the brewers uh, and donating a portion of the proceeds again back to Brew New Hampshire. Uh, Brew New Hampshire is an organization that was founded recently uh, by the Grant State Brewers Guild, uh, as well as uh, members of the local distribu distributing community. And uh, basically their objective is to promote uh, and, and advocate for the booming craft beer industry as a tourism base as well. 
once we had secured the use uh, of the state park, uh, we attempted to start meeting with the town of Hampton Police Department on several occasion, uh, occasions. Uh, we even stopped into the station in March uh, before and after our liquor training seminar at the state liquor store. Um, at the beginning of April, we finally were able to meet with the police department. Um, I did not attend this meeting. My operations manager, John White, did. Uh, at that time, he was told that the Hampton Police Department did not support the race uh, due to the starting time, which is noon, and the time of year. Um, essentially, their, their thought was that 30,000 visitors could descend on Hampton Beach on May 10th if it were a nice day, uh, and that, that would cause potential traffic <coughs> issues. Uh, they did indicate in the meeting, though, uh, that if we uh, met with the, the Board of Selectmen and you approved the event, uh, they would work with us on finalizing a course that was acceptable to them. To date, um, we, have, we have paused all promotions and marketing efforts for this event, uh, this specific event within the series. Uh, we do have approval for every other race uh, throughout the series in Portland, Maine on the 24th of May, June 14th in Stowe, Vermont. Uh, July 20th in Providence, August 2nd in New Haven, and uh, September 28th in Cape Cod at, in Falmouth, Mass. So uh, we really would like to move forward with this event here that is, as it is the first event in the entire series and would be uh, a way for us to uh, really showcase Hampton and use the success we could have here to help elevate the rest of the series. Uh, we know the event will have significant economic impact on the community. As, as mentioned earlier, 44% of the people who have signed up, of the 700 people who have signed up, are from out of state. Um, and, and we believe that, you know, within the next two weeks, if we were able to continue to promote the event, we could secure up to uh, 1,200 people to participate in this event. At this time, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about the event and the course. Um, and thank you for listening to my request. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. We are paying department heads to protect this community. Both the police chief and the fire chief have not signed off on this. I object to being to bypassing them and asking this board to sign uh, some type of of uh, permit. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Welch wrote to Mr. Gray on the 23rd, I'm writing to inform you that the Hampton Police Chief did not approve the request of Gray Matter Marketing that was received late last week for a parade and public gathering license for the Craft Brew Races Seacoast event that you had wished to hold in Hampton on May 10th. It is the practice of the Board of Hampton Board of Selectmen not to approve any request for any type of event that is planned to occur in Hampton that does not receive the approval of the Hampton Police Chief, etc and the fire chief has neglected to uh, approve as well and his memo is April 24th. I refuse to act on this and I refuse to entertain anything to do with this until and unless police and fire are satisfied. Any further comments, ma'am? No, I <coughs> that should be. Sir. Um, what about what he said that the police chief, Mr. Welch, that the police chief said that he would do it if it was approved by the Board of Selectmen. I suppose anything can be done. Uh, the point, in fact, is that uh, we are 13 days from this event. Mm -hmm. There are currently no police officers scheduled to work it. There are currently no firefighters scheduled to work it. There are no emergency plans. <coughs> there are no um, plans on the table as to what's actually going to happen and how that's going to be managed as far as public safety is concerned. Um, the chief told me today that he does not approve the activity uh, because there's not sufficient time to properly plan for it. If the board wants to overrule him, I suppose the board can, but I wouldn't suggest it. I don't think it's a good policy if we don't have in place all of the implements that are necessary to protect the people who are going to participate as well as all the other citizens of the town who may wish to be here. Um, it's going to tie up Ocean Boulevard. It's going to tie up Ashworth Avenue uh, as far north as almost the Boar's Head and as far south as uh, the bridge. That's going to be um, quite an activity. Um, as far as I know, there still is no liquor license because neither the chief nor the uh, fire chief have yeah. signed off on it. There has been presented no requirements under the state fire code for the tent that's to be erected. Uh, 
and all the requirements of the state fire code that have to go with that. Um, I think 13 days is too short to do all that. Uh, so do the two chiefs. And do the uh, are, are the policemen that would have to be there uh, and firemen that would be on duty? Do they uh, does the, would this group pay for them? They would have to pay them as paid detail. Yes. Okay. Assuming we could get them, Mr. Bridal. I think from from what I'm hearing, I, I, it sounds like it's a great event. Uh, however, it's uh, I I. I, I have a tendency to agree with you, Fred. I don't think there's enough time between now and then to get this planned and get it to move forward. Uh, uh, it, it's it's too bad because I think it would be a good event for the beach. I think if this had been brought to the town in the form of an application in March, when the state permits were filed for DREAD and DOT. This would, in fact, would be an activity, but they were, they did not. This was not received until the 21st of this month. That's just too much, too short a period of time uh, to actually act on the application. Anything else, Mr. Barrow? Nope. Mr. Waddell. This, this one really bothers me because I'm a former runner. I'm a, I'm a strong supporter of races in Hampton. One of the reasons I ran was because some of the problems that the other races had. Somebody called me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Scott, somebody? Scott Sheriff at the Brew, New Hampshire. Okay. He called me and discussed this with me, and I told him at that time, he said it was me, the chief, I told him that change the course. Change the, t they'll work with you if you We were 100% open to that. We actually told the police that we would, we were flexible to, we'd run up and down the beach if we had to. The, 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 the point of the event is, is, yes, it is a road race, that's the fun part, but it's also the beer festival that's drawing the people there. Um, you know the the fact is. I we thought I read someplace that it said that that somebody wasn't in favor of somebody from your organization. That somebody said their boss wasn't in favor of changing the course. Absolutely not. We are 100% okay with uh, and flexible because to change the course. I've worked I've worked with the police and the fire on Reach the Beach. We the uh, Hampton Rotary runs the beer tent for that, and I mean they can be sticklers. But I've always found that, that they would work with you and that you could get the job done. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, and the thing is, I mean, do you have the engineering plan for the tent? Because I know you have to. There is no tent. We're, we're, we're going to be using the pavilion at the state beach okay. as well as pop-up tents, which are yeah. the 10 by 10. But I mean, I know that there are lots of uh, requirements. That, I mean, I mean Hampton's probably stricter than yes. other places, but it's possible to get it done. That's that's the thing. That's the thing that bothers me. And I, and I hate like heck. I mean, I agree with, with the with the other folks said from the Beach Commission in the district that, that, you know, it's a great event for Hampton, but I don't see, I, I have to agree with Mary Louise and the, and the rest, I, if we go against the police chief and the, and the fire chief, I think we'd be setting a terrible precedent. And, I, and I, I just don't see how it couldn't be worked out. I mean, that really bothers me that it, because, I, I mean, I, I've been there and I've, I've discussed things with them and there's been issues and we've worked through the issues and, and, and it, it's worked out. It's so I, I just don't know. That, that's I, my I, feeling. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh in here after Mr. Waddell's done. We're going to come back to you, and then we're going to come back to Mr. Welch. Anything further? I'm, I'm, that's yeah. it. Great. Mr. Gray, thank, thanks so much. Uh, I've, I've looked at your website, and uh, I, I know Newport and uh, the, these races, and uh, you're an accomplished person. Uh, I, I see several challenges. I agree with everything that's been said by every board member here. I, I support our police chief. I support our fire chief. I support yeah, Mr. I Welch. Uh, I, an examination of this, the town of Hampton received your request on the 21st of April. Uh, you're calling for uh, between 500 and 1,000 people, and of course, weather conditioned. We have no idea if that's 10,000, 8,000. We have no idea. Um, we're serving alcohol. Uh, we are in very close proximity where life was lost last year during an event and there were two people that lost their lives and there were grievous injuries and we don't know where that's going to shake out. Uh, and this is the year 2014. Uh, going forward on this for the town, I think there needs to be a longer uh, time hack between when we're going to run a road race, when we're going to when we're going to invite people into this community and serve alcohol, and we need months and months. We don't need weeks, and we're not going to shotgun it. This is my opinion. Uh, we're not going to place people at risk. We're not going to overtax our 
municipal resources as we gear up for the summertime. It's a tremendous challenge. We have a Woodstock here every single weekend, every single weekend, and, and it's on our shoulders is, is the leaders that have been elected by the people to keep it safe and to keep it orderly. Uh, your integration with uh, applying to the state, I think uh, that the town and the state need to get a lot closer, including those, those wonderful business owners at the beach when there's a need and a desire. Um, gentlemen have spoken eloquently about wanting to attract people here. Uh, so we need to do a better job when the state is notified using their resources and people are coming on board and you <coughs> cough up a check for almost $1,500. The town knows what's going on. And I, I don't think it's unreasonable to go six months to announce a date. Uh, you're running across uh, bridges in Newport, uh, Cape Cod. Uh, this is 2014. You saw what happened in Boston Marathon and municipal resources need time to stand up and kind of gear up and need time to prepare. And so uh, I, I agree with everybody here. Um, and I think in terms of process, I think the integration between the state, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and the town needs to get a lot tighter. I think the board needs to establish deadlines where we just don't do a frag order and, hey, we're, we're inviting thousands of people down in two weeks. Uh, it's, it's completely, completely impossible to do from a, from a safe standpoint. And that's my, my humble opinion and for, from a gentleman that, that uh, has considerable municipal and government expertise at this. Now we're going to go to Mr. Welch and then back to you. Mr. Welch. Hey, Mr. Chairman, um, I think it's probably a great activity, okay? Um, my problem is that both of my chiefs tell me they don't have the opportunity to properly plan to protect you, protect your people, protect the people who are coming. Uh, I think the chief is right and we've seen it. Uh, if we have a 90 degree day on that particular day, we're going to have 100,000 people there. You won't be able to run on the street because you won't be able to get on the street. We've seen that two years ago when we had that kind of uh, situation. I think the thing that disturbed me most about this, and I know it wasn't you, it was one of your employees or somebody working for you or maybe on a contract, I don't know. <coughs> when the chief was uh, told them that he was not going to approve this, he said it doesn't make any difference, we're going to do it anyhow. Um, well, that was said directly to the chief of police, and I have no reason to believe that he lied to me. Um, this is a, is a very serious matter where we are responsible for every person you bring here and their protection. And I think it's important that we do this in advance. The state did not notify us that you had made this application. They didn't talk to us at all. If they had talked to us in March, that we wouldn't be sitting here. This would be a fait accompli because we'd have several months in which to work to put this together and to make it work. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. Uh, neither DOT nor, or, or DREAD. Um, they, DREAD has signed your permit. I don't believe DOT has signed the permit as of yet. Exactly. They have. They've done that illegally because they no. can't sign it without the chief's exactly. permission. Um, and the statute is very specific in that, that you need this permit. It doesn't matter whether you have a beach permit and whether you have a DOT permit. This permit outranks them all. So uh, I think it's up to this board to make that decision. Uh, I have to say that I'm supporting the chief, both chiefs. Um, they do not have the time to, to do this properly, and we don't want somebody hurt. Thank you. Sir, the floor is yours. Uh, I'm 100% uh, you know, in agreement that you know, this is a, a very short notice from the time that you received the actual permit request to today to the actual event, which is scheduled for 13 days from today. Um, we started this process again back in January. And when we approached the Hampton Beach Village Commission, we thought we had uh, universal kind of acceptance within the town itself. I guess that was an under, uh, you know, but from us, we thought, you know, dealing with all the other tourism councils that we deal with, that, that we were getting the support also of the town itself. Um, that's not to say we didn't think we needed to come in before you guys. We did know that. We did try to reach out to the police on many occasions, starting as early as March. And we tried, you know, that if we had met with the police in March and they had given us approval, we would have been able to supply the permit to you guys uh, for, for approval. Uh, unfortunately, it took us several months, and you know, a month until we got to meet with them, at which time they said no. Obviously, they were looking at it being only four weeks away, uh, to five weeks away at that point. Um, we were told again that with your approval, we would be able to move forward with them, that they would at that time work with us on a plan that would be uh, you know, something that, you, that, that they would be able to approve, and we're 100% willing to do that. We're flexible on the actual course. All we want to do is put on a fun road race so that we can, you know, bring some people to Hampton and put on a good show. 
Um, we, we are 100% committed to safety. That is something we deal with all the time. We put on the, uh, the Citizens Bank Pell Bridge run. It's the only time uh, runners are allowed over a pedestrian bridge in Newport, Rhode Island. Traffic flows the entire time the event goes on. <coughs> 4,000 runners go over a bridge that is uh, about two miles long. We work with DOT, we work with state police, we work with local uh, community officials on both sides of, it, of the bridge. Uh, that's just one example. You know, we are willing to work with them. Um, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm presented with uh, you know, the chief's uh, email, which obviously I'd never seen before, uh, indicates that our boss would move, uh, would want to continue to race <coughs> regardless uh, of our concerns. Regardless is probably the wrong word. I would like to pursue you know, the opportunity to host a race here, it, not regardless of their concerns, but in actual you know, flexibility with their concerns to make this happen. Um, I've, I'm of the opinion where there is a will, there is a way. Uh, we do have only 13 days. The issue at hand is that we do need the city's permission to, uh, town's permission to move forward. If we don't receive that, we can't apply for the DOT permit, we can't apply for the liquor license, and we can't uh, pay the state for the use of Hampton State Beach to host the festival. Uh, we do have the commitment of 27 local small businesses in this community to be a part of this, including several in this town. Some of them are small breweries who are only making beer specifically for this event because the quantity would be more than their normal production scale. Uh, I understand that those are not concerns of the council directly, uh, that those are issues that I have to deal with as a business person, um, but I just wanted to make that known that we really do, we are really are committed to making this happen, um, and, and if we had your approval today, uh, we would, I would stay overnight and, and meet with the police chief tomorrow and the fire department tomorrow to finalize all plans. Uh, we do have a plan for the layout of the event venue. There is no tent. It is pop-up tents. It's a farmer's market style event. Um, you know, it's a very casual, you know, road race. People are going to be sweating afterwards. They're going to be, you know, it's, it's not a, a very high-end ball or anything. There is no major tents. It is just a road race that will take 45 minutes to complete on the roads uh, and be finished. Uh, thank you, sir. Any final comments from you? No, thank you. And, and, and just speaking as, as, as the chair that serves this board and, and without prejudging uh, what, what the vote will be, uh, if it uh, if it is uh, positive or negative, but I would encourage you to, to reach out again if uh, the vote is in the negative to work with these fine gentlemen in your back, the Hampton Beach Village District, the Chamber of Commerce, but get up and notify and close the uh, liaison process that uh, seems to have failed here. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, I'll move to deny, and I I object to bypassing the chain of command. Is there a second? I'll second it. I hate to, but I will. All those in favor of the motion? That's unanimous, sir. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. I would just like to say that, you know, I, we have to be, uh, I myself and I think many people here, the majority of the people yeah. here are, are supportive of road races. Uh, and I think that we're all supportive of the uh, police chief also. So is there a way that you could make this the closing uh, event of your uh, series? Uh, no way. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Appreciate it. Roman 4, approval of minutes. I'll show uh, no, Brian. I'm Seven sorry. Brian. Pardon, pardon me. Uh, number 7, Brian McCain, Channel 22, DSL connection for Channel 13. Brian waits for his close-up. <laughs> 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 Well, this is the one, another step in uh, getting Channel 13 uh, on the air, independent from Channel 22. And I'm going to have Paul talk about it because it's way above my head. In order for the school to be able to upload and manage, we need to put an internet connection in just for their equipment. Uh, we need to do this in advance before it, the equipment shows up because it will be no good in the, until we can get it. And I think there's like a six-week lead-in to get this up and running. So I would like to be able to buy, order a DSL line, and for right now, Channel 22 will have to front the, the front end of this yeah. into it, and then the school will have to take over the monthly recurring costs and whatnot as far as um, keeping it going so that they can use it. Um, John already knows that they don't have access to the building, so this is the only reasonable way for them to do it. And and. We're ordering a big enough connection because the upload is the most important thing. If you, we could have used a Comcast connection, but it's, it's, um, your upload is five meg, 
and we need more speed for that. So at some point if they do put in a um, station into one of the schools or a studio, they'll be able to use this and keep moving forward with it and do their live broadcast as they'd like to. So, um, what, what was it? it was <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, Rusty is catching. Yeah, I forgot it. I just do. No, I don't have it. You know? <laughs> I told you to bring it. I told Paul to bring it. Uh, did we, did we get it in your inbox? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't there. I realize I didn't understand a word of that, but I'll support you anyway. <laughs> Without it, they're not working. Yeah, that's why I have fun with it. Um, it's a 10 map up, 10 map down connection. In other words, it's a good size pipe. For 36 months, it's $295 a month, which I do understand is more expensive than the Comcast connection, but it is, it's is—it's—it's a true internet connection. And the setup's $400. And then we're going to get an extra five IPs for them. Or, so that's an extra $8 a month on top of that with a $25 setup. So we're looking at $295, $47, uh, $728 to spend on the first month, and then after that it'll be tw uh, 295 a month. Thank you, sir. Also uh, move that we approve if the chairman will accept that motion. A second? I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Welch, any input? No, sir. Those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank How you. How thrilling we gave you guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Roman for approval of minutes. I will so move that we approve the minutes of April 14, 2014. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Roman <coughs> 5, Town Manager's Report. Sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, for those of you who have, are sitting at home and have not completed that delicate task of licensing your dog, <laughs> please do. Your licenses are due by Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Please come in to visit with the town clerk and uh, avail yourself of a shiny new license for your puppy. The assessing department has reported on the close of filings for exemptions and credits as follows. This is for the coming tax year, uh, effective April 1st through D March 31st next year. Total exemptions for 2014 for elderly, blind, and disabled decreased by $400. So we actually had a net decrease uh, to $30,938,300. 2014 veterans credits total 842 with a value of $465,235 down by $11,200 from 2013. The partial precinct exemptions increased to 333 from 312 the previous year. As you've all seen paving on the parking lot at Ashworth and Brown where the old fire station used to be located uh, has begun. Uh, we were hoping that it would be completed in a few days, but Mother Nature had other ideas and uh, gave us some uh, some waterlog uh, uh, events that are going to take place probably the remainder of this week. So it may be another week before that's all finished. And they have um, they have put on a loam and and dressed up and put seed in the areas where that needs to happen. The sidewalk is finished. The Town Public Works Department uh, has engaged an individual to clean the Sun Valley Beach oceanfront. Uh, starting the week of Memorial Day and through the Seafood Festival. That's always been a problem for us and this year we think we've, we've solved it so that uh, the people down there will have a clean beach. Uh, final uh, grounds cleanup is underway at the Church Street pump station. Parking should be in place and operation be, be, should be on a normal basis come uh, Memorial Day. I have a couple of other things Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to remind people that May 17th is Hazardous Waste Day. Uh, please go on the website to see what you can deposit at the Hazardous Waste Day um, activity, which will be at 130 Winnicott Road, where the old the old district court building used to be. It will be held in the parking lot out back. FEMA is uh, holding a special session uh, at the uh, Marston Elementary School on Thursday, May 8th, 2014, from 6:30 to 8:30 for municipal officials only. Anybody who wants to attend, please let me know. Call me, email me, whatever. And, and I will I'll send you a reservation and so they have it. It has to be, be RSVP. Yeah. 
So if you'd let me know, know if you'd like to go, I'll, I'll make sure that that occurs. Is that um, for the uh, the floodplain and all? This is for the new Mapping. floodplain maps. That the uh, and they're they're draft. They are not final. So uh, they'll be looking for input from individuals as time goes along, uh, and hope they'll come out with a final plan so that everybody can have something that they can work with. They want to see if Rusty's road Did is you spelled see right. Sir. If Dean, that Dean Merrill, I have already taken care of. Okay. <laughs> He's a member of the commission, so we, yeah, we gave him the uh, email address to correspond to. Um, the House Bill uh, SB 219, which is the bill the authorized the, the board authorized us to submit, dealing with the sale of cemetery lots, mm -hmm. uh, has passed both the House and the Senate. It's been adopted and is going to be moving on to the governor for signature. Good. So that happened this past Wednesday. Um, and the one announcement I really want to have to make here is that we have appointed uh, Christy Pelham as our can never get that word out Pulliam, yeah. Pulliam, uh, as our new finance director for the town of Hampton starting on May first. Yes. Questions for the well done. Questions for the town manager. Select my I, I don't. I just want to make one. Uh, comment on Christy. Christy has been an employee of the town in the finance office since 1998. So she is very well trained, schooled, and prepared to take over her new responsibilities. Um, parking lot, Ashworth and Brown Avenue, that is the um, precinct parking lot. That right? is correct. So the precinct is paying for the paving, et cetera, and all that. Oh, that was part of the deal. Oh, that was part of the deal. Okay. Fire station deal. Okay. And then the facilities for the attendants at that parking lot are going where? The attendants are going where to uh, use facilities? Either to the fire station uh, if it's occupied or to the police station. Fire station if it's occupied, right. as in we are going to have firefighters. If the building is, is manned. In and out. If the building is manned, well, the door is open if the building is manned. So okay. that's not a problem. But they'll uh, be supervised while they're in the building, basically. Yes. Yep. Okay. There's an access directly to a laboratory there that, that can't get the right <coughs> of the building. Okay. And then the um, Sun Valley Beach. Uh, is this the, the raking process, Fred, and where's the debris going? The debris is coming. This is our debris, so it's coming yes. to us. Okay. And we're uh, going to pile it. And we're going to see about that. Okay. Uh, this, this new rake uh, should decrease the amount of sand mm. substantially and if it does and it meets the criteria that we we hope it'll be just be able to be deposited directly into the transfer station and it will just disappear with the trash but there won't be any sorting because there is going to be a, there will be a lot of recyclables in that we have recycling station down there uh, we don't have that kind of trouble on well, Sun Valley true Beach on Sun Valley. Uh, okay. it's not like the State Beach okay. uh, where people just sort of throw everything everywhere yeah. uh, Sun Valley uh, people clean up pretty well after themselves yeah. and we yeah. do have some recycling barrels down there yeah. uh, and we're hoping people will of course use them excellent Okay, so we we have a what a set fee or a per raking fee or a we have a contract for fourteen thousand dollars to do the work. Okay, good, excellent, thank you. And Church Street pumping station is great, great news. Thank you, Fred. Thank Sorry. you, ma'am. Yes, um, <coughs> I uh, wish Christy a lot of luck, and uh, I know that she'll be good at this job. But I am curious about uh, how, you know, how much is she being paid? I'm not asking now. How much is she being paid and how it was determined mm -hmm. how much she's being paid? So I'll check with you later. Okay. Thank you. And we did go through a process. Yeah, I'm sure you did. We did. <laughs> Thank you. So, so we, will, we will be now replacing her former position? She was the supervisor in the finance department, mm -hmm. and we, we have, uh, we're in the process of uh, posting that because okay. it's part of the union. Yep. And that okay. will be that will be filled. Okay. Good. Still done. Thank you. I'm set. <laughs> well done. Uh, congratulations on the director to be. And, and just while the uh, subject is hot, Mr. Welsh, just please for the public's uh, uh, benefit, uh, outline your usual and customary and procedural uh, responsibilities in hiring department heads and your statutory responsibility and authority. I would say 37 colon six to be precise. Thank you. Um, all the departments listed in that section of the statute uh, come under my control and the supervision of the Board of Selectmen, and it is my responsibility to uh, to hire those those department heads. That includes public works, it includes uh, the finance department, 
It includes uh, the police department and the fire department uh, and all the street functions and public works functions of the town. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other questions for the town manager? Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Roman 6, Old Business. Selectman Woolsey, please. Yes, just one quick. When is Keith Noyes due back in, um, Mr. Thursday. Manager? He'll be back Thursday. No, no, no. When is oh, Keith coming into in, us? Into our meeting. Because I think he indicated in the last communication I saw that they, they made headway on the uh, buy-in. I believe that he is in here. Oh, I can turn around and look oh. because it's easier to look at the calendar. Uh, <coughs> I believe he is here oh, the, the 19th. Oh, I'm just anxious. To no, get excuse that. me, you're correct. It's 12th. Oh. Yeah. I'm just eager to get that going. So I know you are. One, okay. Two weeks from tonight, I'm ready to go. Select the Griffin. That's it. Uh, what is this? Whole business, Old I'm business. sorry. Yeah. Um, I have uh, done some checking too, and I will be in favor of the uh, the sewer buy-in also. Okay. Um, but I think we need to talk about exactly how it's going to be. I think you need to do some do more than talk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot of research that needs to be done behind this. There's a lot of understanding of how it needs to be done, mm -hmm. uh, and we need to be very careful how this is implemented so that. No current resident of the town, uh, other than building a brand new building in connection to the sewer, would be hit by this charge. Uh -huh. um, we certainly, uh, we've worked a, a meeting up with Keith. He's coming back on Thursday, and that's one of the things we're going to sit down and talk about is how th how this is put together in, in a sort of a microcosm because we, I sent him a long detailed email indicating to him, I think some of the things that need to happen so that we have fair and equitable treatment for everybody who owns property in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how long do you think that will be? Uh, I that time frame. I, I'm sus like I suspect that the the final time frame here. We're looking at June uh, before this this becomes operational. Uh, it may be earlier than that, but I can't say that with mm -hmm. certainty at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know some of the people I did talk to said that you know one of the ways it makes it fair is the sooner it's done if it's going to be done right the more fair it is for people that are buying property mm -hmm. that's correct so you know and it's it's a sense of fairness if everyone's treated the same and particularly the big thing that concerns me but I've been assured that it's the way it would be is that um, the people are giving credit for what the properties are already producing or whatever you know given some type of a there's a formula to, re to reserve the right of what already was being done on those pieces if a piece is already developed mm -hmm. it won't be charged that's 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 pretty straightforward unless there's an in in increase, increase. If, if there's an increase uh, and it's yeah. for instance if it's a home and it's a straight one bedroom increase uh, that would be one type of charge. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be transferred from a residential property in the business district to a business property, mm -hmm. you get a credit for the, for the residential charge that you paid against what the business charge would be. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some fairness because mm -hmm. there is equity there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, what, that's the only thing that concerns me. Yeah, it concerns me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty, st you. pretty st stingy about that because I think people need to have the fairness invoked into the regulations. It just needs to be there. Otherwise, I'm sure we'll be deluged with people coming in that don't aren't happy, and uh, we don't want anybody who's not happy. We Thank want you. people that feel good about what they're doing. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Thank you, sir. For the role business, sir. You'll say. No. While we're on that subject, one of the one of the people I had that called me had a question was, they they've owned a piece of property for a long time mm -hmm. in town. It's a vacant lot, mm -hmm. and they are planning in a few years to put a house on that. Mm -hmm. And they asked, well, now they're going to be charged this extra fee because, mm -hmm. you know, we've owned this property for years. What, uh, how, how are we going to be treated that way? Well, that's something the board's going to answer, but my, my base bottom line answer to that is yes, you would be charged a fee. Right. It is not now loading on the system, right. and you would be adding a load there. Basically, this is an impact fee. I, 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 people are going to call it all kinds of things, but it's the same thing as we do for the school. 
when when yeah. when uh, a new house is built, a certain amount of money is dedicated towards paying off the debt of the school. Mm -hmm. This money is to pay off and manage the plant, not the the pipelines and so on and so forth. So manage the plant, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and that's that's the manage that's that's the way in which I'm I'm perceiving this should be done. Oh. Um, if if if, however, the town meeting votes to bond something, I think that's that's off the board. All those buildings are connected as part of that bond issue. I, uh, I and I agree with you. I just I'm putting it out there for people so they'll right. have this information. Yeah. Uh, you know, because they said to me, "Well, we, we've been paying our taxes on our property for so long." Yes, but you've been paying taxes on a vacant piece of property. Not it hasn't been valued as right. having. So. Right. Yeah, we're looking at, at, we have a finite resource in the wastewater treatment plant. We have a certain amount of capacity that's left that is not used. And as each building comes online, it takes a piece of that capacity right. away forever. What we're trying to do here is to take and, and, and sell that piece, so to speak, and take that money and reserve it so that later on when that plant has to be enlarged, mm -hmm. the money is there to do it without putting it on the tax rate. That was the other part. I, I uh, w talked to the different developers I talked. They strongly suggested that this money would be put into a some type of fund where it was yeah. only used for that. That's correct. That's the, that's the intent. It's the same as a school. It can be only used for certain things. And that's how right. it is in most other towns. It is that what way. I found. Yeah. Thank you. Further questions, sir? No, that's it. I think it's the window. I want to agree with Rusty and, and, uh, and Rick said, and that I talked to some people too, and developers too, and I, th I think the important thing is, and I'm sure Fred and you and Keith will do it, is that every I is dotted and every T is crossed oh, yes. before we do it, and also that everybody knows what's going on, that, it, that, that that information is out there and discussed before it's implemented so that it's not all of a sudden, whoop, where'd that come mm -hmm. from? This can't be a shock. It needs to be something that's mm -hmm. thoroughly right. understood by everybody. It's thoroughly discussed. This mm -hmm. board has the opportunity to, to literally tear it to shreds so we know that whatever is going to be done is the right thing to do when it's complete. Not a piece of something, but all of something. All of something, and, and that, it, that it's fair and equitable yeah. across the board. Across the board. That's, that's very important. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, sir. Last call from the board for all business. But I just want to say I, want, I have to thank Fred for bringing this forward what two years ago and really getting the uh, the germ of the idea in place because it is something that we need. Thank you, ma'am. Roman seven and new business. Selectman Wilson. No. None. Selectman Griffin. Nothing. 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 Thank you, Mr. Welch. Any new business? No, sir. Thank you, Roman eight. I have the privilege tonight. Consent agenda uh, number one: elderly exemptions. There are eight. Number two: entertainment license and posted permit. Bernie's Bar and Grill, number three, we have already moved and approved. Number four, SAU 90 impact fee withdrawal of 20204 Number five, SAU 90 intermunicipal agreement for cable access facilities and equipment. Number six, lease for seawall revetments and or stairways on town property, 12 more East Lane. I will so move acceptance of the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Roman 9, entertainment licenses under review, 1 Sea Catch Restaurant, 127 Ocean Boulevard. Roman 10, closing comments. Seeing none, Selectman Woolsey. I will move that we adjourn my so fiduciary chairman at uh, 8.13 p.m. Thank you. A second? All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Sign yeah.